Hi, and welcome back. It's Thursday and the 4th, and a pretty nice day in the neighborhood. Some sun, some clouds, but all in all, some dry and nice warm conditions. We do have a chance of some showers in the forecast for tonight. We've got that in every day and night of the forecast. Some days greater than others. Your forecast has changed from where it stood 24 hours ago. Your update coming in just a few moments. A few updates on some programs or some reports that I aired on last night's program also forthcoming, as well as some additional reports of structure fire literally three doors down from my home early this morning, and how we could be right at the heart of a potential explosion of an HIV outbreak, and if you think it's not possible, wait till you hear some statistics that are being thrown out there tonight by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and some other similar like-minded organizations, a lot of other local news and information. And, in fact, I've already got much of tomorrow night's program lined out. Indictments handed down this afternoon late by a McGoffin County Grand Jury. I'll have those prepared to air on tomorrow's program, as well as a couple of other stories that we already have in the mix. So, beginning tonight's program, it's 14 years. That's the sentence handed down today. The owner of two out-of-state pain clinics where hundreds of thousands of prescription pills were unlawfully distributed to thousands of Kentuckians, many of which lived and who live here in the viewing area, was sentenced to 14 years in prison today by U.S. District Judge Emil Depar. 67-year-old Joel Schumrock was sentenced to for conspiracy to distribute oxycodone and other drugs and laundering money. He was also sentenced to forfeiting $7 million in proceeds from the drug conspiracy, which he laundered through various banks, including several offshore accounts under federal law. He must serve 85% of that prison sentence. It all goes back to around June of 08 and runs through June of 2014, where authorities in the federal level say thousands of people from Kentucky, including counties of Clay, Little Rock Castle, Pulaski, Floyd, Knox, Bell, Pike, Jefferson, Whitley, Madison, Montgomery, Fayette, McGoffin, Johnson, many other Kentucky counties all travel to his pain clinics located in either Tucker, Georgia, or Broward, Florida, and they did so, some of which almost daily, to get prescription pills without any medical need whatsoever. The doctor admitted in court, former doctor, if you will, admitted that his clinics cater to out-of-state patients and that those individuals receive little and most often no physical examinations or other medical treatment before obtaining the drugs. He also admitted that he was aware that many of those Kentucky patients were coming home and then, of course, distributing those drugs on the street. Let's begin with a couple of follow-ups on last night's program, and I had to kind of wrap it up in a hurried fashion last evening. While there's not a great deal of new information to add, I do need to go back and repeat a plea on behalf of a local family and the Kentucky State Police for information about a missing McGoffin County woman who both feel may be in danger. Authorities are in the process, among other parts of the investigation, attempting to get and or serve search warrants for electronic communications and things of that nature. And they're exhausting all other avenues as well, trying to turn up any evidence that they can in regards to the missing case of 40-year-old Tabitha Ann Dotson, a resident of Flat Fork. Her home sits just across, I believe, from the old Wheeler Grocery, I am told. Trooper First Class Jimmy Stratton is the lead investigator in the case, and he and Post 9 have been able to release some details about the case. We do know that her family last saw her Monday night around 11 p.m. She lives in the home with her husband and two children, both teenagers. But she has not been seen or heard from since. No evidence of any other items taken from the home except for the clothes that she was wearing, possibly an electronic tablet of some sort. Other than that, they have no leads. The Gulf County Rescue Squad spent much of yesterday combing over parts of that portion of McGoffin County as an all-out effort to make sure that no stone went unturned. However, no evidence was uncovered. She was last seen and known to be wearing a black Harley Davidson t-shirt with flames, black leather biker boots, if you will, torn jeans, and may be in this area or very well may be somewhere else. They are fearful for her safety at this time, and they are hoping that someone maybe after 11 o'clock Monday or at another time may have seen her or someone she may have been with or anything of that nature at a gas station, in traffic, or anywhere else, some sort of lead that they hope will be able to give them some sort of direction in the case. 
If you have any information that you think may be helpful, you can remain anonymous, and you can forward that information to the Kentucky State Police at Post 9 in Pikeville by calling 433-7711. Also, a member of Dotson's family can be reached as well at 349-6037 here locally. We also have another photograph that the family has uh, supplied in hopes that it may jar some sort of memory or recollection of seeing someone who matches her description. Major developments in the case of nearly 900 recipients of Social Security and Floyd County Attorney Eric C. Kahn. And it's been a major development or two or three for each of the past several days, with today a significant announcement coming on behalf of the Social Security Administration as it regards to those 900 recipients of Social Security benefits who saw their checks pulled per the pending investigation as well as major developments from a judge who has heard a motion in the case. First, with the Social Security Administration, officials therein have announced that those disability benefits, which were suspended for nearly 900 residents of Eastern Kentucky and elsewhere, all of which were clients of Eric C. Kahn, those benefits have been reinstated at this time. The Social Security Administration had until 5 o'clock today to respond to a motion filed on behalf of hundreds of those recipients and that federal judge has since ordered that those benefits be reinstated. There was also portions in a Floyd County hearing in which former employees testified to the mass destruction of evidence in the case on behalf of Khan that starting soon after he learned he was under investigation going up through maybe even the present day burning records of mass quantities destroying computers and then taking out significant amounts of cash thousands of dollars from a personal safe in his office each week also in court there had been a temporary restraining order filed asking that con not be allowed to move or transfer any assets or destroy any further evidence Alleging that he had already possibly done so, a judge has frozen all of his assets as of today. Now, that hearing earlier today in the Social Security benefit case was one in which Khan was not absent. However, the next hearing set for, I believe, this coming Monday morning is one in which the judge has ordered Khan to be present during. And all this happens as it is still being reported that there is at least a possibility of three people taking their own lives as a result to the loss of their Social Security benefits as it relates to the Eric C. Kahn case. We'll be right back with more headlines after this. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. A structure fire in Sagersville very early this morning. In fact, only three doors down from my residence. Completely destroyed a local home. No one was injured, and the cause is still under investigation. Upon our arrival, it was fully engulfed, uh, belonging to H.C. Prater. Uh, we uh, had mutual aid uh, agreement from District 3 Fire Department. Uh, they brought a, a tanker. We actually from Empire, but we got a tanker. Um, it's, as you can see, it's a total loss. Uh, we uh, cause and origin hadn't been determined yet. We try to determine that by the insurance company to see the cause and origin of it. Any, any uh, indication as to where it started? And I know it was a rental property that was unoccupied with the utilities still on. Uh, yes, utilities were still on. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the location of the fire is in the, uh, on my left side, the far part of the house back in the back corner is the initiated point of the origin. And that's pretty evident from this video. You can see the portion where the floor is gone. That's where the fire was the hottest and the longest, and that's where it's believed to have started. However, completely unknown as to how at this time. Prater told me on scene that he had some residents who were no longer living there and in the process of moving out. The heat was so hot that it's not surprising necessarily that it melted the plastic or fiberglass road sign at the corner of the street where he turned down to sugar camp. But the fact that it melted the siding on the home across the way is a little more impressive as to just how hot the fire was. 
Prater also told me that when uh, I asked him about how long or how old the residence was, that he said he was born there, and that was 82 years ago. It belonged to his family during that time, and we know it's at least that old in one of the older homes in Dixie of Sagersville. More top headlines to come. Right now, your McGoffa County Farm Bureau sponsored community calendar with an announcement just in that says the Emanuel Baptist Church on Pleasant Hill is hosting Vacation Bible School this Sunday through the 11th. So that is Sunday the 7th through Thursday the 11th, and it's 6.30 to 8.30 nightly. I'll be reminding you. For more reminders, here's tonight's calendar. You want to get out and stretch your legs or spin in the mud a little bit? The Sires of Masonic Lodge is having their annual trail ride. Coach for Kids, this Saturday, they'll gather at South McGoffin Elementary, start to register at 9, depart at 11. It's just 20 bucks per machine for the whole day of fun. Food will be provided at Elk View, and it's just 20 bucks per machine. They hope you will join them and help, help support a wonderful cause. A horse show is this Saturday at the McGoffin County Equestrian Park on West 460, sponsored by the McGoffin County High School dance team and boys basketball team. It will start at 6 p.m., 28 classes as I count them. There will be concessions, and it's just a few bucks to enter. No excuses. They're going to have a wonderful time. So join them. Call Andrea Preston, the dance coach. If you have any questions, 496-5557. A quick reminder, they're picking in a grin this Saturday at Kearney Free Will Baptist Church. And everyone, is, as always, is invited. So says Pastor Butch Whitaker and everyone at Kearney Free Will Baptist. A few announcements also coming in tonight on this Thursday. Revival at the Pine Grove Holiness Church. It starts this Sunday at 11 and then nightly thereafter at 7 p.m. with Harm Gent. Delivering the Word. They hope you'll join them for revival at Pine Grove Holiness Church. And that is, uh, at, well, as I said yesterday, on Punchin, above Punchin, Route 1776. They hope you'll join them for revival. And this just, no, this one just, isn't just in. I had this yesterday, didn't I? A reminder then, the Kentucky Mission Bible Training Center will be singing at the Community Free Will Baptist Church this Sunday. Dinner will follow services, and you're invited to come and join them for the entire morning and somewhat of an afternoon. I think it's going to be some wonderful entertainment at the Kentucky, excuse me, at the Community Fuel Baptist Church. The Sayersville Grade School Family Resource Center is hosting a free summer, summer camp for all their students in grades K through 6, inviting them to come and kick off the summer with them. This is going to be Monday through Friday of next week for grades K to 6. As I said, lunch is going to be provided. Parents, you must provide the transportation 9 to 3 daily for all students of SGS in grades K through 6 for their free summer camp next Monday through Friday. And Shoot Hoops, Not Drugs, the Jeff Shepard Skills Camp comes via Operation Unite to McGoffa County at the high school this Monday, 4 to 7. Just show up for all school-aged kids and all who do. Get a free T-shirt, a free basketball, and free instruction. They'll have water and food provided as well. And a couple of lucky kids will win some really cool basketball goals as a result. Shoot Hoops, Not Drugs, Monday at MCHS in the gym, 4 to 7 p.m. Now, I think I've got maybe a couple of other new announcements. Can you can you tell? No, I don't. Can you tell? I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. Which brings me to a point, if you've got a calendar announcement, birthday, anniversary, or otherwise, this is how you send it to us. And remember, you can always catch Your News Today if you want to see it again or see what you missed on yournewstoday.com. And in local funeral service announcements, we've just received word of the passing of Emma Williams. Emma Leela Rigsby Williams, 97, of Literals Fork Road, who passed away on today's date. Preceded in death by her husband, Manford, she survived by sons Floyd, Roger, Ronald, and Terry, daughters Patricia Sherritt, Cynthia Sue Fairchild, Beverly Gamble, and Mary Romack. Services have been set for this Saturday morning at 11 at the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Visitation will begin tomorrow evening after 6 and then continue up until services Saturday morning in her honor. Hey guys, Jason Weffenstead, sales manager at the all new Hutch Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Paintsville, Kentucky. For as you can tell behind me, we're just weeks away from opening our brand new dealership and we want to invite everybody down to take a test drive and be entered to win a free vacation package from Hutch Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Paintsville, Kentucky. They're only weeks away from their grand opening, but they're open for business today. So come in and get entered for a vacation package to be given away at the brand new Hutch Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Paintsville. 297-5066. 
to get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. As I referred to at the top of the program, indictments returned by McGoffin County Grand Jury and other exclusive news on tomorrow night's program. This report is not so exclusive in its grand scheme of things, but it does focus not just in other parts of Kentucky, but also here in the viewing area. And in fact, we could be very near or at the epicenter of the entire problem if you take a close look at numbers. Drugs. I've been here 17 years. Shortly after coming, that became a major focus of a report that we would run each and every night, and sometime it would consume the entire program in some form or fashion. Still, prescription pills is the main concern, but as of late, an explosion, pardon the pun, if you will, of methamphetamine labs. Johnson County has seen high numbers for years now. McGoffin County just now really getting into a lot of activity on a consistent basis. Heroin also making its way into and through the viewing area. But tonight, it's going to be another facet of drug use that has garnered the attention of so many across the nation, and especially in four neighboring states. We're talking about Hep C and how the numbers are staggering and how it could very likely, says the CDC, per some published reports, lead to a serious and significant HIV outbreak and or situation. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has done a study published and released just last month, and it says that hepatitis C cases across four neighboring and adjoining states, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia, have more than tripled from the course of 2006 to 2012. And out of all those states, Kentucky leads not just them, but the entire United States in the rate of acute hepatitis C. 4.1 cases for every 100,000 residents. Four out of every 100,000 might not sound like a great deal, but it is more than six times the national average. And when you narrow down the scope from the general population to drug users and or addicts, it becomes much more narrow. The study here mentioned says that they track more than 500 drug users since 2008, 70% of which are now testing positive for hep C. Meanwhile, local governments and states across the nation are trying to figure out an answer, how they can slow down or stop the situation, maybe with the implementation of needle exchange programs. And, of course, there has always been concern and thought about drug treatment and, of course, incarceration. But it's reached small communities where hepatitis C was once just a problem out in urban communities, and it affected only minorities. Now it is relatively young, white drug users. They also gave some other examples. For example, in Scott County, Indiana, 160 people have tested positive for HIV in five months. You go to New York City with more than 8 million people, just 49 users tested positive in all of 2013. Meanwhile, here in Kentucky, the two largest cities in our state, Lexington and Louisville, are going to launch programs this summer, we're told, for needle exchange. On a local level, here in Sagersville, a city with a population of about 2,000, our local police chief says it is a predominant problem. Seven out of ten, maybe eight out of ten. Uh, we have a lot of people that, that use needles, uh, and I'm sure that, that they don't get a fresh new one every time. So, yeah, we're, we've got our officers most time use rubber gloves if needles involved, just just to be on our for our safety, not counting. Uh, the subject site and, and so we don't get needles stuck. And being positive for hep C is not something that each subject always informs police about. Some of them do, some of them be honest with us, uh, but most of the time they never tell us a word and we just, we take it upon ourselves to, to be used the precaution because of hepatitis C. And sometimes they do find out. They find out when someone may be open about their situation or when they get stuck, 
have to be tested or when they find evidence like this. This is a portion of a note that was discovered, part of evidence in an arrest that I covered a few months ago here in the city of Sagersville. All the individuals were in a car. There were needles, other drugs, and paraphernalia. And at least one of them informed authorities that he or she had hep C. And another one had this in a ledger. On their to-do list for the day, the following. Place an OTC order with WellCare and then put the info in the book. Fill out a six-month review for food stamps and turn back into the local office. And then find a primary doctor to do blood work. Check liver and schedule hep B and C treatments. Now, before I talk about your Looking Valley RECC forecast, I'm sure a lot of folks, well, I know a lot of folks caught an amazing rainbow or rainbows yesterday. And I mean, they were bright and vibrant and defined. And I was in the park for Andrew's ball game, and this was uh, after 8 o'clock, I guess. And I, what I saw was gorgeous. I got some pictures. But the pictures I had, and most of the time when you take a picture of a rainbow, you rarely get a picture of the hobo end to end. Shannon Howard posted this on her Facebook page, and we're so glad to be able to share it. And it is a gorgeous backdrop. And I've got some other rainbow pics that I've got. I've got a great one for the fall season when it gets here. And then I've got my own. But hers is the only one that I have seen that just was absolutely perfect end to end. So we wish to thank her for uh, sharing that. We want to talk about your weather forecast, though. And even though tonight's forecast has a 30% chance of scattered showers, the show is about an hour early, so it's, I'm off the mark as far as real-time radar-wise, but there's nothing out there. I think it's just covering bases. We are seeing clouds kind of come and go, and we will see mostly cloudy skies, I think, tonight overall, and a low of right around 63, but so far, not many showers, and I think no showers whatsoever tonight, so I could have probably taken that 30% off and been very safe. They're just not out there, and that's a good thing. Warming temperatures are still in the trend, and the forecast, we're going to see 83, mostly sunny on your Friday, and I think like today, just a chance, albeit a very mild one, and to cover all bases, we'll talk about a chance of some showers and storms. And I think that pattern holds pat and true all the way through your weekend. Saturday, expect more of the same, partly sunny skies. Um, you know, a 30% chance of showers mid-afternoon, say between 1 and 4, but that's about it. And really no chance thereafter, I don't think, and into Saturday night with a low of 62. And Sunday, I think the showers are even going to so more so than what I thought yesterday, hold off. For the main part of your Sunday, 84, 69, partly sunny, definitely warmer. That thread of showers and storms, uh, you know, once again, afternoon and very, very slight. 30% is probably giving it a little more credit than what's due. Monday, we'll start off on a dry note. However, while we do have some partly sunny skies, uh, say a 20 to 30% chance of showers early, Turns into a sure thing, I think, by Monday afternoon, evening, and overnight, and or overnight. Let's put the or in there. But definitely the latter part of your Monday and into your Tuesday, we'll see some showers. We'll see some storms. Don't know about how much rainfall we'll get out of this, but definitely that's going to be our next system that really promises to have some weight with it. Tuesday, a high of 80, a little cooler on the back side of those showers, a low of 62. Still have a threat of showers and thunderstorms, but that threat wanes throughout the rest of your work week. And then we're going to see some nice, dry, calm conditions, and maybe we'll take away those ugly green words at the bottom of your screen for a few days thereafter and have some really nice conditions for some of the latter parts of next week and maybe, 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 maybe even beyond. <laughs> That's it for now. Exclusive news and other information that I hope you'll only see with me. You will only see it with me if you see it. The point is, we hope you're back here tomorrow night for more of your news today. And if you see any any pictures like this of any kind, be sure and share them with us. Isn't that gorgeous? Good night.